Okay, out of the blue on Friday, Google released a new update for the Gemma models. This is specifically for the Gemma 7 billion instruction tune model and the Gemma 2 billion instruction tune model. So they're calling this Gemma 1.1. Unfortunately, I can't seem to find any official blog post or anything with more details about this. And at first, I really didn't pay that much attention to it until I actually tried out the models and realized, ah, this has definitely got some interesting updates in how the model reacts to certain prompts and how you can get better results out of it. Now, I will say it's still heavily censored for you know people who are complaining about models being censored and stuff. They haven't really changed things like that, but they certainly have changed how the model responds in ways that I think are interesting and perhaps even hint at how they did some of the instruction fine tuning. And I think those are lessons that we could take away for ourselves in here as well. So if we look at the release notes, there's not a huge amount. So this is on Hugging Face. Basically, it just says this is an update over the original instruction tune Gemma release. So I don't know whether this is like a new instruction tuning or just new alignment in here. So it says Gemma 1.1 was trained over a novel RLHF method leading to substantial gains on quality, coding capabilities, factuality, instruction following, and multi-tone conversation quality. So after playing with it, I would definitely agree that for most use cases, it seems to be better than the original Gemma instruction tunes that were released out there. Now, it's interesting to note that they basically say that we believe this re release represents an improvement for most use cases, but we encourage users to test out their particular application. So they're covering all their bases with that. And I'm very pleased to see that they haven't removed the old version that's still there. You can still download it. And I've actually made a new notebook, which I'm going to go through in a second, showing you the new versus old that we can look at in here. If you are interested in Gemma, just recently, Google ran a Gemma Developer Day in London, and they had a number of different speakers and stuff like that. And this week, they actually released a lot of the videos from that day here. So this one is a fireside chat with Jeannie Banks and Oriol Vinyals. So Oriol Vinyals is one of the leaders of the Gemini team. Interesting to look at there. It's also another kind of interesting discussion of using Flax and Jax with Gemma in here. So most of these videos are pretty short. You can come along and check them out if you're interested in this. So let's jump in, have a look at the code and, and see, you know, what the new updated Gemma model is. And I'll show you some interesting tricks I found around prompting it as well. All right. So I've got the Gemma 7B 1.1 model in here. I've also got the exact same notebook set up for the 1.0 model. So you can go through and compare them. And as always, I'll put all the notebooks in the, the description in here so you can check them out. Lastly, I've also got the 2 billion model which we can have a look at in here. So let's focus on the 1.1 model. I've set this up so that if you do want to try and run this with in 4-bit mode, you can just basically uncomment the stuff so that you can run it in 4-bit mode. I'm actually running it in full resolution. I'm running it on an A100 in here. All right, so one of the key things to note in here is that we're using the Hugging Face chat template, but you must understand that the Gemma model doesn't have a system role. So it's got a role for user, a role for model, but it doesn't have a system role. So that raises a bunch of challenges in here. What I've done for this, and I'll just show you quickly as we jump around, is I've gone and treated this just like I do with other models. So I'm still saying in my generation that I've got an input text and a system prompt. But what I do is I basically insert the system prompt into the user content and I insert it before the input text with two new lines and then the input text in here. So this seems to work for allowing you to basically have sort of system guidance or context there and then having the actual question in here. And the prompt format is the same as before. We've got a start of turn user. We've got our question. But like I said, I would be inserting in some system prompt sort of stuff in there. And then we've got start of turn model, end of turn for user, and then start of turn model here. Already, if we look at just the first sort of test example that they had, how many helicopters can a human eat in one sitting? The answer between 1.1 and 1.0 is very different. So here, the 1.1 answer is the premise of your question is not factual. Humans cannot eat helicopters. 
Whereas here we've got a human cannot eat any helicopters in one sitting. Helicopters are not food and cannot be consumed. You can see that the feel of this is different, even though we've got the exact same settings coming out here. So Gemma 1.1, like 1.0, uses Markdown and outputs things in Markdown. So it's nice to be able to print things out in Markdown and see it there. You'll find that a lot of the elements are the same in that here we can see the question that I'm asking about, write an analogy between mathematics and a lighthouse. We've got this step one, step two, step three kind of thing like before here, step one, step two, step three, and we've got a, a conclusion out there, which also we saw in a lot of the questions in there, but definitely the structure is quite different. So you can see here that it's going through mathematics, it's going through lighthouse, it's connecting these elements. Now, you see this a lot more in some of the other examples. So this kind of step-by-step step is coming out because I'm asking it to write out your reasoning step-by-step. Step. It's interesting, if we play around with that, and you'll see later on in some of the questions, it will give very different answers. So it does make me think that a lot of the way this has been trained both with chain of thought, structured prompts, and structured responses for that so that it learns to do this step-by-step -step thing itself, and it will often come to a, some kind of conclusion or something itself. All right, now, if we ask it to write the email to Sam Altman, it's doing this quite well. Again, we've got this reasoning being structured, but it's not actually calling them step one, step two in here because it's more of an email. For this, if we change the system prompt or like the pre-prompt for this to being Freddie, uh, a young boy, it is interesting to see now that it's actually giving me emojis as well in here. I'm not sure if it's deliberately trying to be funny with the whole robots versus that these are robots or something like that, or whether that's just factually wrong or something, but it certainly is adhering to this idea of a system prompt in here. Same when we do it to the vice president. Again, these are not necessarily the most interesting examples, I think. Some of these ones are actually more interesting. With this example, I would ask it, what is the capital of London? And I put in the system prompt. I should get the right answer out, but then I get this, I am a large language model and can provide concise information on various topics. So this seems to be because we are saying this sort of original idea like this, I took from the Zephyr model, where they would prompt it, telling it that it was Zephyr, telling it that it was trained by Hugging Face, etc. When I take this out, and just say, okay, what is the capital of England? Write your answer short and succinct. It has no problem now just saying London. So I think this is one of the interesting things to look at going through this. Again, if we ask it about Hinton having a conversation with George Washington, it goes through some interesting stuff of the step-by-step. -step. It gives us a conclusion. This is a very common pattern that this model seems to respond in this way, which makes me think that it's been fine-tuned in this way, I wonder about the new RLHF, whether that's got any of this kind of thing in there as well. And I kind of feel that this is something that you can exploit as well for your prompts for doing this. So definitely by changing the sort of preambles, the sort of system, I'm just going to call it a system prompt, but it's like coming before the main prompt. You can definitely get very different results out here. It does an okay job like it did before with the creative writing, etc. Code gen, I'm not going to go into this too much. I have a feeling that we're going to see some interesting stuff around some fine tunes specifically for code in the not too distant future. And the ones that I found interesting were this GSM 8K. So if we go back to the original 1.0 version of this, we would see certain errors in here. So here we've got the cafeteria one with 23 apples. This is the same as before. Okay, it gets this one right. It gets this one kind of wrong with just a rounding error in there. And then it totally tanks this one. And then for 1.0, it, it tanked this one as well. If we look at 1.1, we can see that, okay, it gets the first one correct, but we've got a lot more reasoning going on in here. A lot more of this sort of step-by-step -step reasoning in here. That said, it still gets this wrong. So the step-by-step -step stuff doesn't help it here. Now, I will show you in a second that later on, just playing with it, I realized that this is probably hindering some of it. And so I'll show you a sort of different prompt that I tried and actually got really good results with. 
So just the last one, it gets this one wrong, but it does get the math one right, where it basically works out the same problem above, but just does it through math and gets that right. Okay, so after playing with these, I realized that really what you want is you want it to, perhaps you want to just tell it more about word math and stuff like that. So I've coined this section, a meditation mantra is all you need. And the mantra that I've given it is you are a word math genius, slow down and think about what the math is in the question below, then write out your reasoning step by step. Okay, so it gets the first one. The first one it was getting right before. Okay, so the first one I, I look at is the monsters question. Now, most of the models have gotten this wrong, but by changing this prompt, suddenly now it is able to actually go through and work out that the way this doubles and stuff like that, we actually got 7x. And so we need to divide by 7. And it comes out with the right answer of 121 in here. Again, for the babysitting, when we get it to say, hey, you are a word math genius, slow down and think about what the math is in the question, it now gets this right. It now doesn't have the rounding problem. It, it basically just says $10 for 50 minutes in there. So I think this is really an interesting thing to note about this is that by playing with the prompts for this model, you can massively get this thing to be a lot better in here. Okay, another thing about this model, which I think is really interesting is, and I encourage you to try this out for languages yourself, is that while it's trained on English, it has a very good understanding of a lot of other languages. So here I basically ask it to tell me how I can get to a place in Thai, it's treating this as like a translation task, but here it's phonetically spelling out this road and getting this part right. Perhaps this part is not as good, but then it's able to suddenly put some of these things together in here. So I do feel that these models can respond a lot to just a bit of extra fine tuning for a specific language if you want to bring this out of the Gemma model. Another thing I was really curious about was after the sort of new GSM 8K stuff was looking at, okay, if we just got rid of the system prompt, what do we get back? We can see that we get this sort of rationale. Here I've said, give the rationale before answering. And it's done that and then given the right answer. But we've lost all that step-by-step -step and the markdown of that step-by-step -step in there. And then abbreviating it even more, can Jeffrey Hinton have a conversation with George Washington? But we see now we just get an answer like this. Now, obviously, this is much more risky as to whether you will get the answer right or wrong. But it seems to me that you can also do some nice things here where you could actually get it to output things with tags, similar to perhaps what the Claude 3 models have been doing recently. Another thing that I wanted to try, that I've been trying with models recently, is giving it a very sort of basic React prompt and then seeing, okay, how well does it do? So this is one of the simple sort of React prompts here. We give it some tools. So I'm giving it the tool of Wikipedia, Web Search, Calculator, Weather API. Now remember, this is not connected to the internet or anything. What we're looking to see is, does it tell us the right tool back? And if it does, then we can actually pass the output to work out what the right tool is and to work out what the input for that tool would be. So you can see here, the final thing is we will basically we'll get it to do a thing like where thought, do I need to use a tool? And it should answer yes or no. And if it was no, it would just give us a final answer. If the answer was yes, it should tell us like, okay, the action and then what the tool would be and then the action input in there. And then the observation, we would return back. Now, the models will hallucinate an observation, right? That's to be expected. What we're looking for is when it says yes, back like this, we're then looking for what the tool would be and what the action input would be. And we would pass those out to actually use them. So you can see here, I'm asking it, what is the weather in Singapore? And sure enough, it goes through the, the prompt like before. We get to this begin bit where, okay, the new input is what is the weather in Singapore? The model's thought is, do I need to use a tool? Yes. Action is I need to use the weather API. And then the action input would be Singapore. And then the observation, now this bit, it's hallucinate. So we would pass that out. We, we would just get this. We would get this. We would go and do the tool lookup. 
And then we would pass this back into it with observation that we got from the tool out here. So this is basically how React prompting works. So the next one, so that one, it worked really nicely for this. Now, a lot of the older models, et cetera, won't be able to do this. So this is definitely an interesting kind of thing that we could use Gemma for doing some kinds of tool use and some kinds of React prompting, perhaps even customizing it for sort of function calling going forward. This is one of the things that I would test for before I fine tune a model for function calling something. We can see here, okay, the question is who was King Arthur? So I've got a misspelling there. It comes out, all right, begin. Who is King Arthur? Model thought, do I need to use a tool? Yes. Action, Wikipedia search, input, King Arthur. So again, we've got a nice React prompting in there. And then the final one, what is the latest AI news today? This one, I'm hoping that it's going to go for web search, obviously. I haven't tested one with calculator. You can try that yourself. But we go through, we get to the begin bit. What is the AI news today? Model thought, do I need to use a tool? Yes, action, web search, action, input, latest AI news. This is looking pretty good for this. Now, obviously, all of these bits after are hallucinations. So we would just pass out the thought, yes, action, web search, action input, latest AI news in there. And we then pass those in. So this is really promising for using this model for doing things like React prompting, perhaps even with some fine tuning, doing some nice function calling and stuff like that in the future. All right, just quickly going through the 2 billion model. The 2 billion model does seem better than it was before. Obviously, it's still a long way behind the 7 billion model. If we come down and look at the React prompting for, for some of these, you're going to find that it's definitely not as good. So the 2 billion one, do I need to use a tool? No. And it just gives the final answer that. So it hasn't worked out that this final answer is probably just a hallucination. If we look at the next one, who is King Arthur? Do I need to use a tool? No. And it just answers it for us. Last one, latest AI news. Do I need to use a tool? No. So it does show that the 2 billion one, even though it's better than it perhaps was before, is definitely not as responsive to the React prompting and the reasoning stuff. In Anyway, I've put the notebooks in the description. Go and have a play with it yourself. Try out your own prompts as you go through these models. And please let me know what works for you, what is working better than it was before, what still doesn't work, that kind of thing. Put some those things in the comments. It'd be very interesting to read from other people what they're seeing in here. As always, of course, if you've got any questions, please put them in the comments below. If you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe. And I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.